The Federal Highway Administration's Mobile Asphalt Technology Center, or MATC, brings hands-on education, technology demonstrations, field pavement evaluations, and asphalt materials and mixture testing straight to transportation departments. The MATC introduces emerging asphalt technologies into practice, assisting agencies with positive change and promoting innovation within the asphalt industry. This video shows how the Rapid Shear Rutting Test, or Ideal RT, is run in the MATC laboratory on laboratory prepared specimens. The Ideal RT helps provide an indication of a mixture's resistance to rutting by considering the characteristics of a mixture's strength under a shear load. We'll share some tips and tricks that our crew have learned about the test along the way. There is no federal requirement to use this test. This test is performed on laboratory compacted asphalt mixture specimens at an elevated temperature, typically 50 degrees centigrade. The goal of the Ideal RT test is to generate a parameter known as RT index that indicates the asphalt mixture's potential resistance to rutting. A minimum of three replicates is needed to run the Ideal RT test. Determine the air voids, which typically target 7% plus or minus 0.5% air voids. It is advised to fabricate one specimen initially and determine the air voids. If the air voids are within the acceptable range, continue with the same weight of mixture. If not, then the mixture weight needs to be adjusted. Increase mixture weight to decrease air voids or decrease mixture weight to increase air voids. Measure the thickness and diameter of the test specimens with veneer calipers. The standard test specimen should be 150 plus or minus 2 millimeters diameter by 62 plus or minus 1 millimeter thick for asphalt mixtures having a nominal maximum aggregate size of 19 millimeters or smaller and 95 plus or minus 1 millimeter thick specimens for a nominal maximum aggregate size of 25 millimeters or larger. If dimensions are not being met, then the gyratory mold and settings on the gyratory compactor should be checked. For best results, precondition test specimens to the target test temperature using one of two different methods. Place the samples either in an oven for 150 plus or minus 10 minutes or in a water bath for 45 plus or minus 5 minutes in wet condition. Please consult the specification requirements in your state or organization to check which conditioning method is acceptable for the mixture you are testing. While the specimens are conditioning, we set up the ideal RT loading frame and jig and log in information on the first sample, which typically takes less than five minutes. The testing frame device should be maintained and calibrated based on the manufacturer's recommendations before starting the test. Inspect the device to ensure the load cell and LVDT arms are secure and tight. Inspect the loading frame to ensure the surfaces are clean and free of debris. Because many asphalt mixtures can be very sticky and messy, it is recommended to wipe the loading strip and cradle with a cleaning, lubricating spray between each sample tested to remove any asphalt residue. Next, we input the sample information into the software, including the sample ID, diameter, height, and air void information. Run a warm-up sequence as per the manufacturer's recommendations. An important point to remember is to load the specimen and complete the test in under two minutes after specimen removal from the conditioning chamber. Place the specimen under the loading frame and align the specimen with the center of the loading frame. The loading frame consists of an upper loading strip and a lower cradle. The lower cradle consists of two supports having a curvature equal to the radius of the test specimen. Improper sample alignment can affect the results. The machine imposes a small contact load of 0.1 plus or minus 0.02 kN in load control with a loading rate of 0.05 kN per second. Once the contact load of 0.1 kN is reached, the technician will be prompted to select the yes or no option on the software for the machine to continue loading the specimen at a rate of 50 millimeters per minute. The test may be terminated five seconds after the peak load is observed. Record the load and vertical deformation continuously to calculate the cracking tolerance index or RT index using the software provided with the ideal RT. A bell-shaped curve on the load displacement graph 
Proper recording of the peak load and the load drop indicates a successful completion of the test. This can provide for proper calculation of the RT index parameter. On a successful test, the test specimen typically shears in two planes starting at the top of the specimen and splits the specimen into three sections. The bottom section may take what some describe to be a triangle shape. The RT index is reported as the average of the replicates. The standard deviation of the replicates can be used to assess the variability of the results. The RT index is a shear strength-based parameter that serves as an indicator of the rutting potential of asphalt mixtures during the design and production phases. In general, a higher RT index value would indicate a greater potential for the asphalt mixture to resist rutting. To learn more about balanced mix design and other testing activities being demonstrated by the MATC, visit our website at fhwa.dot.gov. Learn more at www.fhwa.dot.gov. Follow the Federal Highway Administration on Facebook, Instagram, Flickr, LinkedIn, Twitter, and YouTube. The U.S. government does not endorse products or manufacturers. Trademarks or manufacturers' names appear in this video because they are considered essential to the objective of the video. They are included for informational purposes only and are not intended to reflect a preference, approval, or endorsement of any one product or entity. Except for any statutes and regulations cited, the contents of this video do not have the force and effect of law and are not meant to bind the public in any way. This video is intended only to provide information to the public regarding existing requirements under the law or agency's policies.